Welcome back to the channel guys. We're out at the Jean Payne compost heater. It was holding. It was just at 100 degrees and it's dropping now. So we're sitting around 100 around the entire outside of this pile because of this clear poly. So I got this clear poly on here. You can see steam rising off there. Look at the breakdown on all this. You can see steam, I can feel heat coming out of there and steam rising off. That is why I have this clear poly on. We're holding moisture in and we're doubling down and recycling the moisture because you do not want this to dry out. So that is key to any compost pile. All the microorganisms that produce heat have to be wet. So they've got to be moist. They've got to be able to move through that moisture. Not too damp, but like a damp rag, like they say for perfect compost. But this extra piece of poly has really came in handy because we do not have any sun for weeks at a time. So the little bit of solar activity that does come through, if the sun breaks through for a little bit, it definitely heats this pile up and allows a little bit more heat to be absorbed into the pile and basically be reactionary so it's creating more heat as it's allowing this pile to create its own heat and break down and exchange it inside the greenhouse here so we're gonna jump inside the greenhouse now on in the warm greenhouse it's like 32 degrees outside and it's darn warm in here I mean we've got 64 degrees 43 degrees overnight Got a stove going. And we've got our compost heat blowing in. It is getting sucked through this fan, getting shot through the dead center of that pile. I mean, within two, three feet of the center, and then within four feet of the outside or more. So we're well insulated and we're pulling the heat off of inside there. I just want to show, we'll check this out real quick. So we're sitting at like a hundred plus coming in here maybe a hundred and five or so so quick one i always end up throwing a rag over top of that for when i'm showing temperatures because it catches all the heat in there and this does not fit so i have to slide that off and this is to prevent anything from going inside here because i've dropped tools down there and it is not fun to fish a magnet on a string to get them back out so that's why we have a protective cover the other side is plugged by a protective cover and the fan so before we get any further today please consider subscribing to the channel and if you think compost heating or free heating is cool please hit that like button we're going to get into this so I want to first off start by paying credit to Jean Payne himself. Now I've paid credit to him quite a few times on my videos, but it's always worth it because this is all of his work that I've built upon and kind of refined the systems for my own needs. So Jean Payne, if you haven't looked him up, please do so. Do a little research on him. Pretty interesting character. He was a Swiss born French inventor, so he made his way over the mountains and he became successful on his own homestead. He had like 900 acres or something. Don't quote me on that, it might be a little less or a little more, but he used to heat his entire home with compost. Now he used every aspect of it. We haven't picked up on the methane capture yet because you have to seal it in a barrel and we're not able to seal this in any type of structure to harvest the methane off the top yet. I'm just not that far along. So he documented the heating of water through compost with the only compost heating from ground temperature, 42 degrees is where our table sits, up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit or about 60 degrees Celsius at the rate of about four liters per minute or about a gallon per minute, a little bit less. So he would take all of this water and he would run it through his compost and store it in large tanks in his home to provide a thermal mass heating. So alongside all of the water heating, he used to harvest the methane, he used to be able to operate his generator, all the electricity for his home off of that generator, and he used to power his truck and cook with all of that extra methane, free biofuel, free gas. Just wanted to pay quick credit to the man himself because I have been very interested in his stuff ever since I've seen his little truck with a bubble of methane driving around on video when I was a little kid. So what does it take to achieve a Jean Payne compost heated greenhouse what components do I need so you're gonna need some type of water moving system if you're going to use it for heating water now let's start with that first so you need some type of 
pump. We've got tons and tons of pumps. I got a pump up here I'm gonna grab. So here are two examples of pumps. This is just a transfer pump, very loud and very expensive. Now this is just a simple bilge pump. Now I ran one of these for like three, four years before it started to clog up. I could take it apart, clean it, and it works fine. So this one has a little float in it and it has a ground wire old school ones do not. Now I'm going to say these are your best bet. You can use any type of pump. You can use an aquarium pump if you have one that you can use and plug into the wall if you've got electricity. Now if you have an aquarium pump you can use that all the same. These are just two examples. I also have a very small pump. If you look back to our very small compost heated greenhouse, our 6x12 cattle panel greenhouse, it was heated with a very small pump very tiny one that was running on a timer just pumping it for every 15 minutes of every hour so we were able to achieve decent heating with a very small draw that was like a half a gallon per minute or less so we were able to pull that heat off of a small pile without overdrawing it and we weren't harvesting too much of that heat so if you have questions about water pumps or what you can use definitely drop that in the comments below we're going to move on you have to have some type of line so you can see my pex tubing here we also are hooked up to copper so we've got copper and I would suggest not using copper because copper does interact with the microbes and it slows the process of compost heating up because it's going to negate those bacteria and stuff from forming and thriving. It's one of those interesting metals that you've got to be careful with using. It will take the algae out of your tank but it'll also kill the bacteria in your pile. I also want to state that we used a free garden hose that we picked up off Facebook Marketplace five, six, seven, eight years ago when we started our six by 12 cattle panel greenhouse and then we started documenting all this. So we ran that simple garden hose with water in it, coiled up in a compost pile and it transferred some heat. We were about 60, 70 degrees. We were not transferring the kind of heat we transfer with copper or this massive pile. We were only using maybe one, one and a half, two tons at the most. One important fact is having a timer so you can get better longevity out of your systems and you can get better longevity out of the heating of your compost. If you constantly are running water it's going to take a toll on that pile so you have to have a very large pile in order to absorb that draw that you're taking off of it. It still has to be able to create its own heat without cooling off too quickly. Taking that into consideration it's much easier to draw air off of your compost heat than it is water. There's a lot less systems and a lot less draw involved electronically. That sun is cranking up. That sun feels amazing after a month or more of no sun. So let's check these systems out here. Jumping over as I'm talking about the water moving system. So I wanted to show kicking the water on and seeing what's coming out of it right to start. So it'll show 86 degrees, 85 degrees for maybe a couple hours and then it'll go down to about 75 and that's where it holds. So that's just my observation. So we are pulling a lot of heat off that pile even if it is a huge pile and it's a minimal draw. We're flowing about a gallon per minute and that's all we want. It seems like a trickle but that's moving through a hundred feet of copper uphill and then back down flowing through our whole greenhouse. Flowing through all of that blue pex and then coming back and exiting right in our tank. Now where I'm getting at with that is that water takes a lot more energy to heat up obviously. It requires more energy. So putting energy where it needs to be put, it takes a lot less to heat up air. And people always ask, why haven't you used this awesome heat exchanger that you bought for compost heating? Now I'm thinking the whole time, man I got this, I should hook it up. I'm gonna end up using this for a stove or a passive solar design because if I'm pumping all that water through here and pulling the heat off right here, turning it into hot air as opposed to warm water as it moves through my greenhouse, I'm losing. I can just pump the air through my tubing and basically shoot the hot air up, fill the whole greenhouse within 44 minutes. We got 3,900 cubic feet, 88 cubic feet per minute on a good day. It's going to fill this up and heat the greenhouse in about 44 minutes exchanging all of the air inside. So instead of using some type of heat exchanger or radiator system, why don't you just heat the floor of your greenhouse with the looped coil? 
that's what we do and that's where it counts you're throwing that thermal mass we've got a line full of warm water laying on the greenhouse floor it could be 20 30 degrees cooler if we ran it through this first and blew all the heat off of it into the space and then at nighttime all the heat that's in the air is going to cool a lot faster than the thermal mass of water so if you're looking to heat air with your compost don't run it through water first it doesn't make any sense you would just put your hot tube in the pile run the hot compost through and then you've got your hot air without going through all those extra steps spending money on fittings and components to make everything go together believe me all of this stuff is as cheap as possible and we reuse every system every year if you look back years past everything's pretty much the same and we buy new what we have to to get by now we use drain tile i can't remember what i paid for this maybe 75 dollars for a 100 foot roll and i had got two of them back in the day when i needed them one for my geothermal and one for this i have a whole bunch left over from years ago still the more time it has to heat up the more heat you're going to pull off and the less damage it does to your pile pulling that heat off a smaller pile i'm saying the less that pile has to absorb for loss the better so just transferring the air all the time isn't really hurting it much and even on cold days it can bump it up if the heat is inside the greenhouse to start it can help ramp that up the 75 it's blowing in it might be 100 by the end of the day because of that ramping the heat up and exchanging with the pile now using these little simple fans you can use any type of fan this little fan here has been running for three four years solid I haven't even moved it haven't unhooked it no maintenance whatsoever and it cost about ten dollars I spent about ten dollars a piece on those little fans and they have provided a lot of free heating for me in this greenhouse just off of simple solar power so the next thing you really need is hot compost as long as you have some type of hot compost you can set up a very simple system our little tiny greenhouse we literally used a dryer ducting and it would get crushed a little bit under the weight but we would just kind of hollow it back out next year and it would still blow heat it would blow like 86 degrees throughout the winter as long as we kept that pile act it was a very interesting experiment to be able to observe that in a very small greenhouse and to be able to just crank that heat in there it was like 5,000 BTUs or something we figured we were putting into that greenhouse an hour so what do you do if you don't have any compost or don't have anything to make compost with in the winter time so if you don't have any compost in winter you can always make some save those kitchen scraps I've been saving hundreds of pounds of cardboard for this shredder right here now I got this at Harbor Freight and I'm gonna try it out it's like 150 bucks or something like that don't quote me it was around there we have tons and tons of cardboard that this thing is going to shred and you can get any type of shredding unit in order to shred paper cardboard small branches whatever now we're going to use cardboard i'm going to make a compost pile here in the next week or two i mean the temperatures are about 30 to 40 during the day now so it's not bad it's almost like springtime out here compared to negative crap we were dealing with so getting a hot compost pile is on my next list i'm going to set up a small jean Payne system to show everybody how everything goes together and how easy it can be if you know what you're doing and you've had experience with hot composting hot composting is the hardest step of setting all this up so if you can't get hot compost you got nothing to work with so this is going to be very important like I said I've got hundreds of pounds of cardboard I've been saving from family members and anybody I know in order to run it through this thing and I'm going to try and build a large pile out there I'll be able to pull some nitrogen materials urea urine farmyard waste chicken poo anything that has nitrogen harvested crops in here waste crops wood ash is another great way to recycle that wood ash that we're always creating aside from making bricks with it we could throw it on your compost that wood ash will jump start the process of your hot composting and it can kick start it like an activator so like using comfrey and stuff like that in the summertime your wood ash and you're going to use a bunch of different stuff that you don't usually use in the summertime to get this compost pile going so I really wanted to come out and show everybody the compost heating system. It's 
the first second week of February here. The videos sometimes get post dated, so you'll see it two weeks after I film it. Sometimes I upload them right away. It all depends on how I'm feeling that day. I really like to talk about all of the compost and sizes. Now, if you're going to use a one ton pile, you've got about 6,600 some BTUs coming off of that per hour during the duration. I mean, you got two weeks to a month on that. Now, if you jump up to two tons of compost, you've got about 13, 14,000 BTUs per hour being created and you got maybe a month two months pushing three months if you've got good ratio and that's going to leave you with about 33,000 BTUs per hour at four tons and you're going to have three to six month burn duration if you have the ratios correct now pile size always matters nine tons is what we're sitting at that's about 32 cubic yards and we're pushing between 57 and 59,000 BTUs to this greenhouse per hour as we want to draw them we have that potential now that pile can burn anywhere from 12 to 24 months if we had activated with more nitrogen I would be confident that it will burn for a long long time we did not use any nitrogen we used old wood chips new wood chips this year and mixed them in they had a bunch of leaves shredded up in them so there was a lot of green nitrogen rich matter and I just wanted to see what I could do I let this soak in got it very very wet let the rain and snow melt on it put my clear poly over our pile and that really bumped up the heat so using enough water is very important to the process of hot composting an underwatered pile won't have the ability to achieve heat and an overwatered pile will just stagnate and start to be anaerobic now there's always anaerobic spots in your compost and that is where methane is created so there is always methane there's always gases coming off any compost pile whether you're turning it daily or not there is always pockets that have no oxygen because they've burnt it up or exhausted it. so in every pile you've got pockets of methane forming being created and released to the atmosphere that is why we don't compost inside and that is why I want to try and harvest the methane off some of our wood chips that is for a later date though because it is impossible to collect them the way that we've tried because it just escapes so we have to have some type of sealed container in order to collect that methane as the pressure builds and the methane rises. I feel like I covered everything that it takes to get a Jean Payne compost heater going and I'm going to show everybody how that process works on a very small scale. I'm going to use a small solar pump that I used in my small greenhouse for years and we'll be using this cool little shredder kind of doing a review on it. It's got reverse dual tines so it's got two tines running in opposite directions so hopefully it does some damage to the cardboard and shreds it up for us. I'm really interested I haven't even used it yet. I really want to use it and get a video process showing how to make a hot compost pile with this tool right here because this is pretty affordable. It's a nice little investment and it's electric so we're not putting gas and fuel into it, exhausting. So I want to see how well that works for our use basically just to make compost or shred things up for compost. So if anybody has any questions on Jean Payne compost heating, definitely drop it in the comments below. We just showed what we are achieving out of ours. So that's basically what we're achieving after a couple months of running through negative temperatures even. There's a few tips and tricks like putting a clear poly on, making sure your ratios are right, nitrogen to carbon, and having the correct amount of water is very important. I'll reiterate it again, I've said it many times on this video already so I want to thank you guys for watching and stay tuned I'm going to be creating some small compost heating experiments so I can show everybody how to do it and how easy it can be achieved if you've already got hot compost